right, so today we're doing level two. Let's start on question eight. Whenever Keith goes traveling, he something his luggage very carefully. He once had a bag stolen on a train, so he always keeps his things where he can see them. Uh, Keith is worried about his bags, someone taking his bags. So the words we have today, guards, carves, divorces, and accelerates. A guard is someone who watches or protects something. So this would be uh, the noun. So I wanted to go into the building, but the guard stopped me. So the guard is the person who is protecting the building. So I wanted to go into the building, but the person protecting the building stopped me. But we can also use this as a verb. The police officer was guarding the gold. The police officer was watching the gold so no one could take it. The police officer was protecting the gold so no one could take it. So this really means kind of take care of. Uh, I would protect my children, which means I would make sure that my children are safe. So I think we actually already have our answer. When Keith goes traveling, he guards his luggage very carefully. He takes care of, he protects his luggage very carefully because he had a bad experience where someone took his luggage before. But let's check the other vocabulary anyways. Carves, to cut into a shape. So you would carve wood, but it's like slice. This basically means to cut. Uh, you carve wood, which means you cut a shape into the wood. In Canada, they carve totem poles. Uh, that'll be our first sentence. The First Nations people carve totem poles. So in Canada, the Aboriginal people, the people who were there first, are called First Nations because there's many groups. That's why nation is plural. So the First Nations people cut wood into shapes to make totem poles. So they cut in faces, they cut in animals, they cut in things, and they make the totem poles that are very famous in Canada. We also use it to carve a turkey. So this really means to slice or to cut a turkey into slices, into pieces. So you're not making a shape with the turkey, but for some reason when we cut a turkey, we don't say we cut a turkey, we say we carve a turkey. I think it just makes it sound more important or more special. Divorces. To divorce is to separate. Now we use this most often when a marriage ends. So they had been married for 20 years, but decided to get a divorce. They had been married for 20 years, but decided to end their marriage and separate. That's how we use that word the most. But I could say I want to divorce myself from this company, which means I want to leave this company. I want to divorce myself from this idea, which means I want to be separate from this idea. And the last one, accelerate. So to accelerate just means to go faster. When you're in a car, you push on the accelerator to make the car go faster. That's what we call that pedal in English. He pushed on the accelerator too hard and the car accelerated suddenly, which means he pushed down on the pedal and the car just went vroom, went really fast. He pushed on the accelerator too hard and the car went faster suddenly. So you pushed down too hard and then whoa, you weren't ready for that. So after our four words, when Keith goes traveling, he carves, he cuts his luggage very carefully. No. When Keith goes traveling, he divorces his luggage. He separates from his luggage. No. When Keith goes traveling, he accelerates. He maybe pushes his luggage very carefully. No. So when Keith goes traveling, he guards his luggage very carefully. He once had a bag stolen on a train, so he always keeps his things where he can see them. All right, number nine. Louis has worked at the same company since he graduated from college. This year... After four something of working there, he's going to retire. So we have, he graduated from college. So usually you graduate from college when you're young and then he's going to retire. So you retire when you're old. So this is going to be a long time. So if the words we have are jails, decades, principles, and societies. So jail... A jail is the place where you go when you get arrested. So when you've done something wrong, they arrest you and they put you in a building with bars. I think you know what a jail is. Uh, they put you in a building 
And in that building, there's a little room and that little room you can't leave. That's called a jail. So my brother was arrested for drunk driving and spent a night in jail. My brother was arrested for drunk driving and spent a night. My brother was arrested for drunk driving and spent a night locked in the police station so he couldn't leave. Decades. 10 years. It's very simple. I have had this car for a decade. I've had this car for 10 years. It's pretty simple. Principles. An idea you live by. So this is a little more difficult. So this principle is going to be something like, I do not lie on principle. I do not lie because it is a rule that I live by. So I don't lie because it is wrong, because I feel it's wrong. So actually, maybe we'll make stick rule up there as well. So maybe, so you have some principles. You don't steal, you don't lie, you don't cheat on tests. Uh, these are the kind of principles that most people try to live by. It's not like a law. It's more of an idea of what is good and what is wrong in the world. Whereas a law is a rule. Society is actually very simple. We use it for a group. So I joined the literary society at group. I joined the literary society at school. I joined the literary group at school. So this would be a group that loves books. But we use society for a much bigger group for like Japan. Japan is one big group of people and then you have Japanese society. Japanese society values tradition. Japanese people as a group values traditions society can be many things most of the time we use it for like a country of people that group of people that society so louis has worked at the same company since he graduated from college this year after for something of working there he is going to retire so we know we're talking about a long time so i think we also know the only one that has to do with time here is decades so this year after four decades after 40 years of working at the same company, he is going to retire. Uh, after four jails, Louis has worked at the same company since he graduated from college. This year, after four jails of working there, he's going to retire. So he's gone to jail four times. He wouldn't retire. Maybe they would fire him. Uh, Louis has worked at the same company since he graduated from college. This year, after four principles, he's going to retire. That sentence doesn't really work. So four rules that he lives by, he's going to retire or for societies, for large groups of people. That doesn't really work either. Louis has worked at the same company since he graduated from college. This year, after four decades of working there, he is going to retire. Kate took a walk by the sea yesterday. Some of the rocks were wet and slippery, so she often had to something herself to avoid falling in the water, so she had to be careful. So the words we have are punish, defeat, filter, and steady. To punish someone, oh, this is difficult. To punish someone is to make someone feel bad for doing something wrong. This is a very, very simple way of saying it because you can have small punishment or big punishment. So feel bad isn't always strong. So feel bad is the part that maybe isn't quite right. Uh, you might be making their life more difficult. So we had jail earlier. So I can use some of our vocabulary. He committed a crime and was punished by going to jail for two decades. So this isn't just feeling bad. That's why I'm not really happy with this part. So how can I change this? Because feel bad is the small version. The big version is going to jail for 20 years, for two decades. So feel bad isn't right. It's difficult to do this in a simple way because the word I want to say is to punish someone for doing something wrong. To not get a penalty? Penalty isn't the right word. To penalize someone for doing something wrong, but penalize is also a very hard, very difficult word. So here we have a big one and a small one. So he committed a crime and was punished by going to jail for two decades, for 20 years. 
So that's very big. He did something wrong. Maybe he hurt somebody. Maybe he stole something and had to go to prison, had to go to jail for 20 years. But then there's a small one like in your house. I didn't study for an exam and my father punished me by taking away my phone. So my father took away my phone so I couldn't use it anymore. So I felt bad. So this is what the word penalize means. It means to, in this one, you are losing your life. Your life is going to stop for 20 years because you have to go to jail. In this one, it's kind of small. You're going to feel bad so you don't get access to your phone anymore. So that's why it's so hard to say punish because it's actually many, many different things. It's about making you feel bad. You go to jail, you feel bad, but also you lose your life. So that penalty is much bigger. But I didn't study for my exam. My father takes away my phone. The penalty is much smaller. So I just feel bad. My life isn't really ruined. So because it's so many things, it's very hard for me to think of one simple sentence that actually does everything. But let's give some simple sentences for these anyways. We'll try our best. He committed a crime and, oh, I'm actually really, really struggling with this. I didn't study for an exam and my father punished me and my father made me feel bad. Made me feel sorry? Maybe make me feel sorry. So you go to jail for 20 years so you feel sorry for the crime you committed. It's just in this one, it's not strong enough. Like the word sorry. He committed a crime and had to go for 20 years to make up for what he did. So this is a kind of way of saying sorry. I'm honestly not happy with my definition. But I think you can see the two examples. Again, they're two very big examples. So in that way, hopefully you can understand that punish. So you can punish, you can punish yourself. Like I didn't do something. I won't eat chocolate for this week. When you commit a crime, you can get punished. You have to pay money or you have to go to jail or you have to do something else. So there are lots of kinds of punishments and they're supposed to match what you did. You could punish someone too much if your punishment is too hard. Well, that was a really hard sentence. I'm surprised at how difficult that one was. Defeat. Defeat just means to lose. So it's the opposite of win. So the baseball team tried their best, but they were defeated. Oh, the baseball team tried their best, but were defeated. The baseball team tried their best, but they, but they lost the game. Filter. Clean water. So filter just means to clean stuff. So you probably have a water filter on your tap. So the water goes through and the filter tries to take out any bad bits, any dirt or anything from the water so you get clean water. I have an air filter in my room. I get bad allergies. So it takes the air and it tries to take out any dust or any pollen in the air so that I can breathe clean air all the time. We went camping and I brought a water filter. We went camping and I brought a water filter so we could drink from the mountain stream. We went camping and I brought something to clean the water so we could drink from the mountain stream. Uh, well, you can also use this for taking out the bad parts of language. So I filter my language. So I filter my language when I'm around my children means I don't say bad words when I am around my children. So I take my language and I take out the bad words. So I'm filtering my language when I'm around my children. Steady just means balanced. So the motorcycle was so steady, it could stand on its own. It was so well balanced. It could stand on its own. So they didn't, so the motorcycle would just stand up. It doesn't fall over. He is very steady on his feet, means he is very, so he's very steady on his feet. He has very good balance and doesn't fall over easily. So if you have any questions or comments, you can leave a comment under the video or you can send an email to soundsgreatenglish at gmail.com. If you want a copy of this document that we just made, there will be a link to a Google folder in the description of the video.